Hi, my name is Fazal, and today in Ajibo ki baatein we have with us Mr. Bertola. Um, if I have to describe him, I would say him as Superman, <laughs> as he has been a really great person, and I had been following him. Uh, and the one thing I really liked about him that his motivation towards the social uh, and helping others. Yeah, he is. Uh, he really does traveling. And today, the thing I would love to learn is what is social capital. So it is a really broad term, and it is confusing me. So yeah. Yes. So thank you very much for inviting me. Great to be here, and uh, I had some fantastic experiences in uh, Pakistan when uh, Ryan Alawala invited me one and a half year back. Unfortunately, the Corona happened after, so. I was not able to come back, yet, but I hope it will be in the in the nearby future. So thank you very much for inviting me. So yeah, a little bit about myself. I'm from Sweden. Uh, I'm grew up in a small village in North Sweden, and I live pretty close to that village even today. Though I've been <clears throat> traveling in many places around the world, I lived in a few places and. These days, when we have social media, you can travel around the world every day many times. So it's like accelerating. So that's uh, pretty cool, and it opens a lot of opportunities there. So uh, I see myself as a systems entrepreneur, and a system entrepreneur they can have different roles, but uh, primarily I uh, connect different people and organizations together in order to achieve some you know greater purpose uh, often things that you can't accomplish on your own uh, often you need other people or an organization to help you uh, to move quicker forward because one plus one is often greater than two and that's the essence of social capital. So social capital is basically how you build relations between people and organizations in a, in I would say, in a beneficial way, because you can all obviously also get into conflicts and friction when you build relations. So the the art is to find the right people and the right organizations so you can uh, help each other on the journey and where you want to go so i think that that is really the key of what social capital is it, it is this collective resource of something that you can build together which you can't do alone yeah. one thing i really would love to know that you have been one of the most positive uh, persons i have ever talked to uh, so the world is so super negative so how do you manage to be so uh, so pro positive amongst these problems well uh, uh, it's hard to say on on the one hand i think as long as i remember and that's pretty long time uh, I always saw myself as I had some kind of intrinsic motivation, like when I go back in time and remember my time in school or uh, in sports later in the years, or I have always had this energy inside. I have done different things in my life, but uh, this sort of energy has always been there. And I think uh, that's probably something you grow up with, depending on, you know, surroundings and probably friends and family and, and other things. And, and that is like a heritage. It's something you bring forward. Maybe it's uh, genetical to some uh, extent as well. I don't know. I, I'm not, uh, I haven't, uh, I don't have the academic background in, in knowing this, but but I think it can be something like uh, what how you grow up and a little bit maybe genetics to some extent. Uh, and uh, also, if you're lucky in life, I think it's not always easy, you know, depending on where you are born. And 
and so forth. It's um, but uh, but in general, I find it easier uh, to. Uh, it's more fun to be with people who are positive than negative. <laughs> So to some extent, you can decide a little bit about your future to that extent, because it is this saying, you become uh, like the people you are coming together with. So if you spend a lot of time with people who see negative things, you will be more negative and, and the opposite. So I think that's uh, probably an important part of Maybe from the beginning, it can be a bit of luck to get into this condition. And if you start there, you get into next group of people who are the same. And so positive things uh, uh, gives more positive things. And negative, if you get in a positive spiral or a negative spiral, which can be hard to get out of uh, for good and bad. So, so probably it. But... Uh, I think you can do it a bit conscious also that uh, if you have the opportunity, decide to be with, you know, one saying is that uh, if you're the smartest person in the room, you are in the wrong room. So it's also there like, who do you surround yourself with? If you want to be better or, and I, I think that goes for, or if you are positive in, in a way as well, um, motivation. So I would definitely try to do this thing myself. Uh, it is a really great, a great learning. So one question is being really asked amongst the people that uh, as world is changing by seconds right now. <laughs> so what do you think the world would uh, look after the 10 years? Because you have a really great experience and you have been uh, connected with uh, super um, big NGOs and other people. So what do you think the world would look in the next 10 years? Uh, it's, uh, I'm not sure if, uh, I'm, uh, may, some years back I was more sure about the future than I am today. And um, you get, there is a saying, the more you know, the less you know. Uh, so... You just look back the last two years, what happened with the corona, how quickly that shifted the world. And it was, I think, to most people, it was a bit um, not unpredictable because scientists had said this, this pandemic will come sooner or later. It's just a matter of time. But still, when it comes, it's, you're like the world is sort of unprepared. Uh, so it's, I think it's very, very difficult to know what it will be in 10 years. Um, it, it seems, on the one hand, you can go back 10 years and probably you remember r roughly what you did 10 years back in time. So it's not that far ahead into the future, but at the still, you can see how much has happened only the last year in the Corona time. So. And the world is uh, moving faster and faster. So more things can happen and shocks can start. So I think uh, to a large extent, we can influence the future. I think it will be uh, hopefully this power conflicts, you know, with big politics and which we are like small players in as a normal human being when you have the big you know, the US and China and you know, all the, the big players in the world with some craziness from time to time where if they have the wrong people in the top, that's a bit of scary because you don't know really. Maybe, maybe something happens which is unintended. Maybe you, know, you don't know if it's, everything is like the best intelligence, something accidents happen. So that not needs to be taken into consideration of the future, that unpredictable things uh, can happen. But I think uh, regardless of that, we should work towards building a more resilient society, whatever happens, because that will be, uh, I think that will bring more people if most things work fine, uh, will give them a better life overall. And so let's focus on what we can do and prepare for potentially what could go, get wrong. 
So regardless of what happens, it's good to build a more resilient society. And resilient society means we need to have, I mean, good education, uh, bring in as many people as possible should have uh, access to education because that's really, the, I think, the best investment for the future. Uh, for for every everyone will benefit for that. It's the easiest thing I think to see to to have education, a reasonable education, um, because everyone will win. It's a it's a win win for everyone. Uh, you can uh, yeah. So focus on that obviously. Build good partnerships. Make stronger institutions that are more efficient that can work for people. Uh, tra more transparent world um, and like that so we should all focus on that I think in when we work with internet to reduce conflicts and build friendships and I mean build friendships what can I do you are doing it right now Rehan uh, has been doing it for years and years and years so you can do a lot as a, a single human being somewhere in the world today and if, if everyone connects a bit more, then it's harder to close down. Because to close down is the most effective way, if you look at North Korea, for example, or some others, uh, to, to, you know, to close down so you don't get the information. That's really the key for knowledge and development of society. So, yeah, so I think we should, should go, go in that direction. So one thing I really loved in this podcast are the sayings that you are you have been sharing. They are been really really great. The quotes. So a quote is really famous. Uh, our Persian poet Rumi says that uh, if you want to change the society, you have to change yourself. Yeah. Now, how should I change myself to make my society better? What do you think about that? Yeah, that's. Uh... <laughs> Not the easy question. I think uh, uh, I, if you have good education, it, it could be easier if, if you have that already from the start. I mean, uh, to have some time for yourself, to reflect, uh, to be maybe in nature. I can see that when I go out in nature or something, you, you, know, you just walk somewhere. Immediately you start to you have your ideas and you think uh, inside. When you sit here on the internet and like that, like I have been doing many years as well, you get like, uh, it's like a black hole. You get sucked into with all impressions. Uh, so I think you need a, a balance there where you a bit of shut off this and go out and absorb it. And it's like, um, yeah, it comes together, all the impressions there. And for me, you need to find this place where you can uh, be with your own thoughts, um, like go through it. And I find maybe times like once a week or in the morning or find a routine where you can focus on your thinking and your like reflection part. So find a routine where, where you focus on yourself and where do I want to go? What do I see? What do I learn? What have, what have I learned this week? Where do I want to go next week? So it's a little bit like when you're in sports, if you're in sport, uh, you have the long vision and you have the, uh, the day and the week and the month and like that. So uh, am I going in the right direction? And do I listen to myself? Is this really where I want to go? Or is it someone else telling me this? I think many people later in life, uh, you know, all these wealthy people you read from time, uh, time to time in newspaper that they got super rich and uh, became movie stars. Or, and suddenly they shift and become a monk or Buddhist or something. And because maybe you don't follow your true values, what you really are, and you, you sort of shut this uh, channel to yourself off and but after 30 40 50 years suddenly you see that i didn't live my values and then it come it catch up with you so th then this shift comes so 
so if you take this sort of listen to yourself more often, probably you will have a more joyful life. So I think that's one of the keys to, to feel content with where you are going. Often it's like this, uh, if I get more wealth and become more famous and get more likes and like that, then I will be more happy. But maybe you see after some time that this was not the case. There's some kind of emptiness there. You are no less than a, a handsome man as an actor. So, so why did why did you do this stuff? You did uh, so the the work you are doing doesn't have a lot of money or the fame. What motivates you? Uh, I think I, I had this uh, motivation from early days. I was as long as I remember, I was always interested in geography and history and culture. Uh, I looked at maps when I was like uh, eight, nine, ten years old. I could uh, memorize the cities, uh, uh, countries of the world, and uh, looked at uh, read books about other places and like that. So, so I had this in my. And then when the internet came, and I got the opportunity to travel a little bit as well. So this only increased this. Uh, so I want to experience things. I I I never. If I have like a luxury car or whatever, it's not that important for, for me to experience other places and go out with fr friends, maybe spend time in the mountain or like that. That's like luxury for me. And uh, so far I got the opportunity to, to do that. Uh, not all the time, of course, but uh, time. I think also you, you, if you have this around you all the time, it's a bit boring. It's so it's also good to work a little bit for it. Then you, it's more joyful when you, you have a plan and you work for it. For I was in sports many years, and you know, if you have worked hard and really exercised, and then you, sometimes you succeed, and you, it's a big satisfaction. Satisfaction because it's everything from how much effort you put into it to the final day when you achieve what you want. So. So I think that's, uh, sometimes it's hard. It's part of the journey. It can't all, always be nice. So, hello. I'm not sure if you get a problem there with your, hello. Okay, so you have to travel a lot. What do you think is the benefit of traveling? Uh, you get to know people, you get to better understand. Uh, Hello? Um, yeah. Are you, uh, am I uh, audio? Uh, yeah, now I can hear you, but you disappeared yeah. for 15, 20 seconds. Uh, sorry for that. Yeah, no so, you, so the last question I would really love to know, that you travel a lot. What do you think is the benefit of traveling? The, the biggest benefit of traveling is probably that you get an understanding of the world and hopefully about yourself. Because if you get to know other people and cultures, you also see how different people are, but they are same at the same time. So you see similar things and you see things that are different. And uh, yeah, so that's that experience is uh, incredible to uh, experience culture, to go to a cafe, to I love to sit on you know a cafe, just look out of city life or or whatever. So it, it's like uh, you use so many of your senses. You can listen, you can you can feel the air, you can uh, you can read, you can. I think you activate a lot of your senses and that's uh, satisfying. You, you really maximize it in some way. Um, but I think this understanding of other things. Um, it's like if you love food, if you like buffets, it's more fun to, to eat of a buffet. It's more colorful. You get more pieces than to have one, um, you know, cuisine that you eat. It, it, I think it's a good, 
metaphorical um, similarity there with culture and travel and experience other places there. So uh, I think that's the best, at least that's the best for me. So to, to go out and, and also this preparation, maybe you read what I want to go to this place and you read about the history and how the culture be, you build some expectation and like that. So, yeah. Uh, it was no less than an honor to be with you. It was a really, really fun time for me <laughs> and a really great learning opportunity. So hopefully uh, in the future, I would really love to have you again. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. And, so and I think, uh, and yeah. I think uh, uh, travel uh, with uh, video like we do now is pretty okay as well. Of course, it's not the same as tra travel in person, but still it's pretty okay. And I think it's better and better the technology as you have probably have seen, I have done a lot of journeys out where I do a lot of like Rehan, a lot of videos out in nature when you go to different places. So at least you get the feeling of how it looks in other places because you will never be able to like travel all places in the world and experience, but at least you, you can get the feeling of it. Thank you. And to everyone who was with us. So, so Tata for today.